There are certain gardening secrets that get whispered about, passed from one grower to another, but never spoken too loudly in mainstream circles. One of them is an old soil additive that experts officially banned decades ago. Yet, in pockets of traditional farming and among experimental gardeners, this very same ingredient continues to be used quietly, because it has a proven track record of doubling harvests and reviving soil that looks dead on the surface. Why was it banned? And more importantly, why do gardeners who know its power keep using it to this day? This is one of those topics that draws a line between textbook gardening and hands-in-the-dirt reality. For the next few minutes, you're going to discover the story of this soil additive, how it works, why authorities decided to turn against it, and what role it can play in modern gardens if used wisely. By the end, you'll know the science behind its success and how serious growers are adapting it for safe and sustainable use. The forgotten additive that shocked agriculture. The soil additive in question is wood ash. At first glance, it seems harmless. Burn a pile of logs or branches, and what's left behind is a soft gray powder. For centuries, farmers across Europe, Asia, and the Americas added wood ash to their fields. The results were undeniable. Crops sprang up greener, root vegetables fattened more quickly, and soils that had been drained from repeated planting suddenly produced abundance again. The reason is simple chemistry. Wood ash is loaded with potassium, calcium carbonate, and trace minerals, exactly the nutrient soil loses after seasons of continuous cropping. When applied to acidic soils, ash acts as a natural liming agent, raising pH and restoring balance. In effect, farmers had discovered a cheap, renewable soil tonic that nature produced in every fireplace and every wood-burning stove. But what was celebrated for centuries eventually came under scrutiny, and that's when bans and restrictions began to emerge. The story of wood ash's fall from favor is as much about modern agriculture as it is about the additive itself. By the mid-20th century, chemical fertilizers were being mass-produced and marketed as precision farming. These factory-made fertilizers promised exact NPK ratios, consistency, and rapid results. In comparison, wood ash was messy, inconsistent, and often unpredictable depending on the type of wood burned. Experts began pointing to potential dangers. Too much ash, they argued, could raise soil pH excessively, locking up essential nutrients. In sandy soils, ash could leach too quickly, sending minerals into groundwater. There was also the concern that ash from treated or painted wood could carry heavy metals. To regulatory bodies, it was easier to discourage wood ash entirely than to teach careful moderate use. So, in many agricultural handbooks, wood ash went from being a respected amendment to something frowned upon, discouraged, or outright banned in professional farming systems. Yet despite the stigma, gardeners in the know kept applying it to their plots quietly because they saw the difference with their own eyes. To understand why gardeners continue to swear by wood ash, it helps to look deeper at its chemistry. The most significant contribution is potassium, sometimes called the quality nutrient. While nitrogen drives leafy growth and phosphorus builds roots, potassium strengthens plants overall. It improves disease resistance, enhances water regulation, and makes fruit sweeter while giving vegetables longer shelf life. Many store-bought fertilizers underdeliver on potassium, which makes wood ash uniquely valuable. Calcium carbonate is another hidden gift. In acidic soils where crops struggle to absorb nutrients, wood ash neutralizes acidity gently, creating an environment where microbes thrive and worms return. A soil rich in microbial diversity cycles nutrients faster, producing that coveted humus layer where plants can root deeply. And then there are the trace elements. Magnesium, boron, and zinc may be required in small amounts, but without them, entire growth cycles collapse. Wood ash provides these micronutrients in forms that plants can actually access, making it a slow-release mineral booster that commercial fertilizers rarely match. So, how do gardeners use it safely today? Well, the lesson modern gardeners have taken from history is, quite frankly, moderation. You see, the old habit of dumping wheelbarrows of ash directly into the soil is what caused all that trouble. Instead, Careful layering and mixing allow the benefits without the risks. It's all about balance, really. 
Now let's talk about some practical applications. Some gardeners sprinkle wood ash thinly across beds and then cover it with compost. This clever technique shields the ash from blowing away, buffers the pH adjustment, and ensures minerals bind to organic matter rather than leach out. Others mix small amounts directly into compost piles. The ash acts as a deodorizer, balances acidity, and enriches the finished compost with minerals that would otherwise be lost. Another practice is using wood ash as a barrier mulch. When sprinkled around the base of plants, it can deter slugs and soft-bodied pests while simultaneously feeding the soil below. The key here is not to reapply constantly. A thin layer once or twice per season is usually enough to see benefits without upsetting soil chemistry. It's all about finding that sweet spot. And now, the proof in harvests. Gardeners who keep records often report dramatic differences. Tomatoes grown in soils enriched with moderate ash develop thicker skins and sweeter flesh. Root crops like carrots, beets, and potatoes bulk up more quickly and resist rot in storage. Leafy greens come out crisper, with fewer signs of fungal disease. But perhaps the most striking result is resilience. During drought seasons, ash-fed soils retain moisture better, and crops withstand stress longer. During wet years, calcium from ash strengthens cell walls, helping plants resist fungal attacks. These subtle yet critical boosts explain why farmers for centuries credited wood ash with keeping their families alive when other fields failed. It's truly remarkable, isn't it? While gardeners continue to see value, the official ban serves as a cautionary reminder. Not all ash is equal. Burning plywood, treated lumber, or painted wood produces toxic residues that should never touch soil. Even clean hardwood ash must be applied carefully because honestly, an overdose can turn a bed alkaline almost overnight. So, this is where modern soil testing comes in. Simple kits actually let gardeners check their soil's pH before and after adding ash. And, you know, when the pH creeps too high, amendments like sulfur or fresh organic matter can help restore balance. In other words, knowledge really transforms a banned practice into a precision tool. The banning of wood ash is honestly a classic case of agricultural amnesia. Instead of refining an old natural method, mainstream systems just replaced it with synthetic shortcuts. But the soil remembers, and so do the gardeners who trust their results over regulations. What's happening now is kind of a quiet revival. As growers move away from chemical inputs and toward regenerative practices, wood ash is reappearing in conversations. It's not the cure-all some once believed, but when you combine it with compost, cover crops, and mulch, it becomes part of a balanced system. The same ashes that once fueled our stoves can fuel the rebirth of our soils. For gardeners willing to look past bans and stigmas, the story of wood ash offers a powerful lesson. Soil thrives on diversity, diverse organic matter, diverse minerals, and diverse microbial life. Wood ash provides elements that other amendments just can't, and when used with care, it transforms tired soil into living soil. The experts may have banned it for broad agriculture, but in the hands of skilled gardeners, it's still one of the most effective tools for doubling harvests, season after season. If this guide has opened your eyes to the hidden potential in soil additives that mainstream voices have dismissed, then you're already thinking like the gardeners who get the best results. Keep learning, keep experimenting, and most importantly, keep sharing this knowledge. Subscribe to Hydro Haven and hey, pass this video along to other growers who are serious about building living soil. The more we revive these forgotten practices, the richer our harvests and our future gardens will become.